everybody, and thank you for coming today to this recital. Uh, my name is Nick Balgarino. I'll be playing trombone today for you. And this is my friend Brian Strawley. He'll be playing trumpet of uh, various shapes and sizes. And we brought a variation of our instruments, and we'll be playing them all for you in a little bit. Uh, today, uh, we'll be playing for you variations on uh, different composers who have composed for the church setting in brass. So for the trombone, a lot of our rep has our beginnings in the church, uh, for trombone specifically. Um, does anybody have a guess? This is the oldest trombone that I have. Does anybody have a guess as to Zach by guess? Coincidentally, my nickname in college. Uh, but uh, does anybody have a guess as to what year this instrument first appeared? Any guesses? 1450. That's how long we've been around, that all slide instruments have been around. Uh, originally called the Sacbou in France, uh, when it made the cross of the English Channel, uh, it was anglicized to sac but to mock the French. Um, but a lot of composers, including in France, really love to write for this instrument. One such composer is P.V. de la Noue, who wrote a beautiful Bach-inspired uh, piece for trombone, a Bach cello suite-inspired piece. And I'd like to play for you the theme uh, to get us started so you can get what the trombone sounds like into your ear. <laughs> Thank you. 
next piece we're going to do is Fantasia number nine uh, from his fantasies from Bavir. Uh, and Telemann again. And, uh, these work pretty well for trumpet and trombone. These, uh, of course, you know, we don't, as brass players, we don't have the literature to play that violin or piano or uh, harpsichord would have. So we have to kind of do a little rearranging. And these are, these are great arrangements. Uh, actually, the, the arrangements are done by Michael Sachs, who's the principal trumpet of the Cleveland Orchestra, and Joseph Alessi, who is uh, principal trombone of the New York Philharmonic. So I guess they, they teamed up and uh, figured, you know, they work good for two trombones, two trumpets. So we have to do a lot of uh, borrowing and stuff and arranging to, to survive as musicians. Be able to play some good stuff. Of course, there's really excellent modern stuff written, but this is this is just a taste of what our arrangements are. So here we go. Fantasia number nine. Um. Sebastian Bach, yeah? He's a relatively uh, famous figure now in classical music, uh, but you'll notice the first half of this program is very Telemann heavy, and Telemann was a much bigger figure in Bach's time than Bach was. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, and in fact, Bach is only as famous as he is now because of uh, Felix Mendelssohn. He conducted, I believe, it was a St. Matthew Passion. And that's what uh, sparked interest in Bach's works. But during his time, you would have heard Telemann in churches. You would have heard Telemann's compositions uh, around town. Um, and a lot of his work survives today because of that fact. Uh, so now what we are going to do is play Bore, which comes out of a different keyboard book, Music for Keyboard or Lute.
So out of the same book uh, for keyboard and lute is this next piece called Pasacal. And what's really cool about this piece is you're gonna hear two themes that him and I are going to share. Um, a really nice stoic uh, beginning uh, that is accompanied by a lot of weaving lines. And you'll hear a lot of these patterns that uh, Telemann likes to play with. Uh, later on, we'll play uh, another couple pieces of his. Uh, you're gonna hear us play the same line but offset by a bar. And he kind of starts to develop that idea, his compositional style, in this book with this piece. So you'll hear it. Um, especially trombone, uh, we need to steal, quote, uh, we, we call it transcribing, uh, but, but take a lot of our music from other instruments. And the trombone's natural choice uh, to do that is cello, because we share a lot of the same uh, range, we share a lot of the uh, same lyrical style of playing uh, that we like to do. Uh, so for now, what I'd like to do is play for you uh, Vivaldi. Uh, Vivaldi's Cello Sonata Number no. 6, uh, movements 1, which is the Largo, 2, which is the Allegro non troppo, and then 3, which is the Allegro. Now, Vivaldi would not have known the trombone by this shape. This is a, this is a Vincent Bach American-style trombone. This is what you'll hear. Uh, this style of trombone is what you would hear if you went down to the Kennedy Center or up to Baltimore. That's this style of trombone. What Vivaldi and many other composers of his time were familiar with that is, not gonna stay. <coughs> is this instrument here, um, the sec butt, the sec bu. Um, and this instrument has a very unique sound to it. Um, so you've heard the regular trombone. I'll just play a few notes on the sac butt to give you an idea of what it sounds like. <laughs> So I'll play the first movement for you on sack butt to give you an idea of what it sounds like in the context of uh, eight, early uh, 17th, uh, 18th century music. Thank 
trumpets here today. So I, the, the first one you saw me play, and please feel free to ask questions or anything. It's, you know, we can kind of relax if we can and enjoy ourselves. But uh, this is a G piccolo. You can, you can uh, change the crooks to get it to different pitches. And it's, it's a really cool horn. It's uh, from Belgium. It's a Mahillon. We say it, Mahillon here in the States. M-A-H-I-L-L-O-N. It looks like it's from about 17 something. It didn't have vowels, but it actually it's like a 1956 model. <laughs> but it's, uh, it plays great. It, it has the, the natural trumpet sound, but which is the natural trumpet, is a trumpet without vowels. So we had to do, back then, we had to do everything with our lips. We didn't have, these vowels were not invented until about 1836 by a man by the name of Lowell. Adolf Sachs had a lot of contributions uh, with the keyed system. And uh, so, back in box time, you would have trumpets, you'd have some holes in them, but it was mostly by the tension of your lips. So that's why the box music and handles, all the uh, Baroque period instruments, uh, the Baroque period style of trumpet playing is in the Clarino register, which is in the higher range. This is because of the overtone system. The partials are closer together in the high range, and I'll show you what I mean. So the natural, actually we can thank Bach for all the difficulty and intonation that we, we especially as trumpet players have to deal with. On these C trumpets, the G's are usually sharp, so are the C's. We gotta, you know, we don't have, we gotta bend it down for the Because he tempered the intonation. That's why you hear the well-tempered clavier, that look and all that. So, uh, intonation, quote unquote, is actually to the, today's standards extremely attitude. So I'll give you a, uh, a demonstration. So I'm going to start with the lowest partial, then the next closest partial is an octave above that. Then after that is a fifth above, then a fourth above, then a third above, then a minor third, then a whole step, then kind of a half step, then it gets smaller as you go up. And that's during Bach handles time in the Baroque period of time, that's what we had to play. So, you know, the first piece I played for you was Gottfried Reich's fanfare. Gottfried Reich got supposedly Bach's principal trumpet player. So they would just stand around all day and do all these corner exercises to get their corners real tight so they could play, play up in that high range. But, you know, you wouldn't want to hear them play in the low range because they're so Specifically, their muscles are geared for that. It would be like a a sprinter playing on the Philadelphia Eagles. It just, it's just a different set of skills, you know. Or Washington, what's the football team? I don't know. I'm not watching the sports, so. It's <laughs> but okay, so here's a demonstration. Uh, so it's, it's, it doesn't sound pretty. I'll let you know ahead of time. So the lowest note, this is the C. <laughs> So 
Brahms and Bach. Different sounds. I could play a few notes on that.
All right, so that's my uh, trumpet demonstration. I think uh, this might be a little bit of a trombone thing here. So in terms of the trombones that I have here, uh, we already talked about this one a little bit. This is the sac butt, uh, sac boule, if you speak French. Uh, does anybody have uh, an idea of what this one might be called? It's from Germany. In fact, this one's an original uh, 1880s uh, from Germany. Anybody? Is that Bach? Bach? Is that the word Wagner? Yeah. Oh, this is Wagner? Yeah, yeah. This one would have, this is the trombone Wagner would have been familiar with. Uh, in fact, uh, later Brahms, Wagner, uh, Mahler would have been familiar with this make, and in fact, up until very recently, uh, German orchestras were playing on this style of trombone. So this is uh, a posaunen, which is just German for, uh, well, it, it means head singer in German, um, but we, we call this the posaunen. Um, and then this, of course, is just regular old trombone. Now, funny thing about all these words that I'm throwing at you, uh, they all mean trombone. In every language, it's always been known as trombone, but trombone is the Italian word for this instrument. Uh, because dating back to when this instrument was in use, they would call this in Italy and Italian-speaking countries trombone, because the natural trumpet was called the tromba. So quite literally, you may have heard the joke, oh, trombone's just a big trumpet. It kind of is. You know, the big slide trumpet, it's pitched an octave below, uh, and the suffix O-N-E just means large, so trombone, trom uh, as tiny, so tiny tromba, big tromba. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, we'll grab the sack right here. We just call them, uh, nowadays we call them their native language names to denote the different shapes. So to tell you a little bit more about this one, uh, this is basically just a natural trumpet with a slide. The bore is roughly the same size, maybe a little bit bigger on some models. Um, this has a lot more in common with a picket trumpet, which is a slide trumpet where the slide goes behind the head. Uh, very common in English Baroque music, people will play it. But this is the kind of instrument that, say, Mozart would have been familiar with. Uh, Vivaldi certainly would have been, uh, Haydn would have been familiar with this shape of instrument. Um, so one of the most famous excerpts for trombone is called Tuba Miru, and it comes from uh, Mozart's Requiem. And this is the instrument that's used to call everybody to worship, fitting for the venue that we're in. Uh, and it's not often people get to hear Mozart's Requiem played on historically accurate, or as some people say, historically inspired instruments. So for, uh, for today I'd like to give you that experience by playing for you Tuba Mirum on Sakba. <laughs> first came around in the 1400s, uh, its home was not in an orchestra. It was not outside. Uh, in fact, for much of the trombone's existence, it was at home right here in the church, often doubling the choir parts um, and played with the choir and the organ. And in fact, a lot of my early experiences with this instrument come from such settings. Um, I play with choirs uh, in A415, uh, low pitch, you know, just like they did back in the uh, Baroque days. So that's where this instrument uh, found its home. Now this instrument, this is a 
Penzel trombone uh, from Germany, 1880s. This instrument is one that, uh, as you said, Wagner, uh, Mahler certainly would have been familiar with. Now, one thing that I find really cool about this instrument, and one thing I like to show people, um, first off, you'll notice it has two nubs on the slide. This is the tuning slide. Most trombones today are tuned from back here. Uh, we call this TIS, tuning in slide. Uh, so the Germans were big fans of that. It added weight to the slide. But also, what's really fun about this instrument you know, most people, have, you guys know German cars, right? German cars are, you know, stereotypically really reliable, right? Uh, that's because German machining is, is, is typically um, referred to as some of the best, right? But they were so bad at drawing slide tubes when trombones first came around, especially when the larger horns like this came about, that they made the top tube float. And if I bend it that way, you can see the slide bends. That's by design, because what this allows the instrument to do is the top slide can adjust depending on how out of alignment this one is. So this instrument, the posauna, uh, the, the shape, right? You'll notice this is a lot larger, especially in the bell. This instrument has more in common with a French horn than it does the modern trombone, which has more in common with a uh, trumpet. That's because this instrument is conical. So conical is a term that we use with brass instruments to describe uh, an instrument that gets progressively larger at a similar rate throughout the horn. So this is the narrowest point, this is the largest point, and uh, it, gets, it gets larger at about the same rate all the way through until you hit the flare here. And that creates a very different sound. It's a very warm sound. Um, so for example, everybody knows, you know, Ride of the Valkyries, uh, and you're used to hearing it very punchy, bum 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 bum, right? The very clear front. On this horn, it's a little bit more rounded, and I'll, I'll demonstrate what I mean. <laughs> because like a cylinder, it stays about the same bore size until you get to the bell, right? So this point is narrow, the narrowest point on the horn. On the other side of the slide, before it comes up into the bell section, it stays the same size. And even through here, it stays roughly the same size. And then it gets larger to help expand the sound. And what that does is it allows the air to be more um, compressed. It allows you to have a clearer articulation. So for example, you guys hear the difference a little bit? There's a little bit more, it, it's pointy. Um, another good example to, to have something that's not going to break glass in the back here is uh, Mahler III. You guys know who Mahler is, yeah? A uh, very famous composer. Um, one of the most famous solos he wrote for trombone is in his third symphony. And uh, the instrument he wrote for was this style of instrument. So I'll play, play the excerpt for you on this horn, and then I'll play it for you on this one. So it's a little rounder, right? 
sacrifice. So this is going to be a very different sound. because its function in music has shifted from being a melodic instrument like the trumpet, the tromba of the Italian and the early Renaissance, now to being a harmonic instrument. So now we're supporting the melody, which is where, um, let's see, where, where uh, pieces like this, I will play San Saro, but we'll get back to that. You know, we're supporting the melody like this, uh, Sans Sauce Third Symphony has the trombone paired with cello and clarinet, and we're in the uh, the lower end of the register supporting. I'll just play the first phrase for y'all here. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 